Welcome to Hard Talk with me, Zainab Badawi. The removal of Robert Mugabe as president of Zimbabwe in November led to several Mugabe loyalists going underground. The most prominent of these is probably Jonathan Moyo, until recently a cabinet minister, key ally and close advisor to Robert Mugabe and his wife, Grace. He's been described as one of the most hated men in Zimbabwe and is wanted in the country on corruption charges. Jonathan Moyo is now in hiding in self-imposed exile and says his family is being harassed and that his life is under threat. We cannot disclose his location at his request. This is his first interview since the ousting of President Mugabe. What has he got to say for himself? Welcome to Hard Talk. Why have you gone into hiding and not wished to disclose your whereabouts? Uh, it is because of the extraordinary situation that uh, exists in Zimbabwe following the unconstitutional overthrow of the government uh, in a military coup that took place on the 15th of November. And uh, on that day, the military specifically targeted my, my house and myself with a clear intention to cause harm. And uh, that's why I am not in the country, although I left the country legally. Uh, I am not uh, at liberty to disclose my whereabouts because they have shown a very clear and determined intention to find me and harm me wherever I am. You've talked about um, worries about your life and threats and harassment and so on. What's the evidence for that? It's common cause in Zimbabwe. I've even put that evidence on uh, my Twitter feed on the morning of the 15th of November, around 2.30 a.m. Zimbabwean time, uh, some between 15 to 25 uh, heavily armed uh, SAS uh, soldiers came to my residence uh, and uh, they destroyed the gate destroyed the entrance, the door to my house, and uh, shot their way into every room looking for me. But fortunately, they did not find me, and none of uh, the members of my family were there because I had been forewarned the previous uh, night that the military uh, were going to raid my house, uh, and I was advised by a very close friend uh, that uh, I should uh, not spend the night at my house and that uh, I should take every member of my family with me out of the house and uh, uh, the evidence, physically evidence of what then happened to yeah. my house has been there for anyone to see. It All right, so where did you go then? Itself. Where did you go? Reports are that you went with your family to Robert Mugabe's mansion and that they were allowed uh, to stay but you were refused. Is that what happened? Uh, that is uh, false. I'm glad that uh, the military people who wanted uh, to harm me on the night of the coup don't actually know uh, uh, what happened and they've been peddling falsehoods about uh, the circumstances. Uh, what I would say, without putting in jeopardy, many of God's people who were very kind to give me assistance is that uh, it is true that uh, I took my family with me on the uh, night of the 14th of November to my colleague's uh, residence and my colleague being Sevia Kasukwere, uh, who was then a minister of uh, local government and uh, the amazing uh, fact is that his house was also attacked yes. about the same time when my house was being attacked uh, when I was there with my family. It was him uh, and his family uh, and all together there were 11 of us uh, at his residence uh, when uh, the 
the residence was uh, All right. attacked. So that's where you went. But you know that um, Saviour Kasuku and you um, are one of the most wanted men from Zimbabwe and in fact um, the former finance minister Ignatius Chombo is in prison. How did you manage to escape Zimbabwe? You say you left legally but yet on the other hand you've just described how the army and the authorities were coming after you. Yes, um, uh, when they came to attack uh, Sylvia Gasukwere's house about uh, uh, at about 2.30 a.m. Uh, on the 15th of November, they subjected it to some 15 minutes of uh, gunfire. And um, uh, amazingly, after those 15 minutes, and they had surrounded the house, uh, the sounds of gunfire just went silent. And uh, we waited there for, I think, something like 10 minutes and there was no movement or sign of any presence of uh, these uh, uh, special forces that had surrounded the house and shot at it from every angle. And uh, we then uh, uh, managed to get out of the house mm -hmm. and uh, we were amazed that they were no longer there. They probably so how did you leave the country? So you've explained how the army have, have attacked, bo attacked both your house and Savio Kasuga's but how did you actually leave Zimbabwe? And the other question I asked you was, why do you now fear for your life since you've left the country? I mean, are you receiving more death threats where you are? And how did you flee the country? How did you leave the country? Uh, uh, I left uh, Zimbabwe with the help of uh, people who to me are angels uh, because uh, they saved uh, 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 lives and um, I am not at liberty to say who, who helped me, how they helped me and how I left Zimbabwe except to say I left Zimbabwe when President Mugabe was uh, the president of the country and I left uh, with the assistance of these people legally, legally. I left the country legally. I managed to escape the net of the military people and uh, to be where I am legally. So, but you, do you not think that, as I said, you know, you've got the new Zimbabwean government saying they've got Interpol, um, they want Interpol to help them locate you and uh, a couple of others, the most wanted, some say most hated men in Zimbabwe because you were, of course, very, very close to uh, Robert Mugabe. It's going to be a matter of time, isn't it, before you are returned to the country? Well, uh, fortunately, there's something called international law. I, I want to make clear that uh, when I left Zimbabwe, there was no warrant of arrest against me, and uh, there was only a death warrant, and we have uh, uh, incontrovertible evidence uh, in black and white, a documentation that shows what the intention uh, of uh, the junta in Harare was with regard to my security as well as uh, that of uh, my colleagues. They have since their coup uh, started uh, uh, framing all sorts of uh, political charges in the guise of uh, criminal charges. They said they were targeting the so-called criminal uh, people, criminals uh, surrounding President Mugabe, but we now know that they were, they were talking about political criminals. They have not come up with any crimes that rise to the level of charges that would warrant the interest or attention of Interpol. These are people in pursuit of a political agenda. They believe that we committed political crimes by supporting President Mugabe and not supporting them. Right. So this is a very strange and unique definition of criminals only applicable right. to Zimbabwe. But I repeat, okay. there is international law. Yes, 
everything. Yeah, but they will won't. Finally... But they, there's also Zimbabwean law, and, and, and the government has said that it wants, the president, Menengagwa, wants to track down $2 billion of state funds that um, have disappeared through corruption, and uh, the reports suggest that you are wanted for allegedly stealing assets under the systemic corruption that we know existed under the uh, Mugabe years. That is why they there's want no... you. There's no such evidence that they've put anywhere. They are going after people who they allege were hoarding uh, beans, rice, yeah, and, you're uh, one of those. and such things. Well, no, you're one of the people I... they say was involved in systemic corruption. Let me just tell you what Ibo Mandaza, a political analyst and former ZANU-PF member, has said. He talks about the new government's delicate handling of the old man, Robert Mugabe, but they've they'll make an example of Grace Mugabe and some others around her, even though the corruption goes much bigger. You were one of Grace Mugabe's key allies, part of the so-called G40 faction that was trying to manoeuvre her as successor to Robert Mugabe. So you are really top of the list when it comes to the people who are wanted for this alleged corruption. First of all, it is not corrupt to support a particular politician to become uh, any uh, office holder, whether it's vice president, president. It can't be a crime in a constitutional democracy. It is false to allege that uh, there was an attempt uh, to elevate uh, Dr. Grace Mugabe, the, the, the former first lady. What is really going on here is that there is a group of people that sees itself as the stockholders of Zimbabwe. And this group is led by Emerson Mnangagwa, who is now president. But de facto, the control of this group is by General Chiwenga, the former uh, well, he's the head vice of president the Zimbabwe now. He's Defense the vice president now. Who is just, the vice president okay, but, now. But he's, he's vice president but, but because I, of a military coup. But, he has well, not been voted yes. into that office. No, but the if military, you grab we, power, by force, Can I just say, you then must find excuses to justify that uh, grab, and are, this is what they are doing. You are questioning the uh, Emerson, Emerson Menengag with the new president. World Reaction has, uh, by and large, welcomed him. Rex Tillerson, U.S. Secretary of State. Zimbabwe has an extraordinary opportunity to set itself in a new path. British Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson, I'm encouraged by President Menengagwa's words so far. Angela Merkel, the German Chancellor, said to him, Germany will support you as a partner in your endeavours to start a new chapter in the history of Zimbabwe. That is the reality you're facing now. You can criticise what has happened as much as you like, but that is what the world is saying. It's accepted. It, this. Yes, it's not the world which chooses the leaders of Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe has a constitution and Mnangagwa and Chiwenga, they know only too well that they have come into power via the bullet and not the ballot. The constitution of Zimbabwe requires people to come into power via the ballot. Well, there'll be elections and the people in 2018 of Zimbabwe will decide. I okay. mean, there'll be if elections. the world wants to be at odds with the uh, popular will of the people of Zimbabwe, that is up to them. We can only be concerned about the Republic of Zimbabwe, the views of the people of Zimbabwe, the international conspiracy that supports a, a, a dictatorship I, that has come to power via the bullet is another story right, he, he, will not be experienced by the Zimbabweans for the first time. Well, he's promised free and fair elections in August this year. You've talked he about can't hold free and fair well, elections. Let's see, let's he cannot, see. You cannot, okay. there has never been well, a single see. case Zenab, of a government that has come to power via the bullet. You've talked of conspiracy, but um, what is it you want? Because in one of your tweets since Mugabe lost power, you've said to the new leadership in Zimbabwe, if you and your lot think that this will last, then you ain't seen nothing yet, come rain or shine. Are you plotting? No. Zimbabwe, in spite of this coup, Zena, the fact of the matter is Zimbabwe has come of age. It is a country of laws. We have a new constitution, and this is a constitution that the people of Zimbabwe made for themselves. And it has been broken, and uh, it has been broken via a coup. And if anyone out there thinks that the Zimbabweans are going to embrace the coup, entrench these leaders, when they know a very worrying fact is enough. Right now, the cabinet of the Republic of Zimbabwe 
is led by the most feared people in the history of this country. They are feared because they are associated with every atrocity that has happened from Kukurawundi to Mrambatwina. The people of Zimbabwe cannot be expected to embrace the most feared individuals. What do you want? A return to the status quo ante? You want to see a return of Robert Mugabe are, and Grace Mugabe yeah. as his possible successor? Is that what you'd like to see? The, we, uh, every thinking, right thinking Zimbabwean would like to see the restoration of constitutionalism and legit legitimacy in Zimbabwe. It is not about any individual. It is about the rule of the law. The, constitutional has, uh, the, the constitution of the country has been subverted and there has to be a return to constitutionalism. And we do not expect the very same people who overthrew the constitution to restore it. And there's a lot that gets said about Mugabe. I want to put on record that I, for one, I'm very, very happy, proud of the fact that I served with him and under him. And uh, that you that. backed Grace Mugabe, who is uh, by no, and large not listen. admired at all in the country. Are you happy? No, Do you no, want I to just, see her still no, have no, no, chances it, of getting into power? Zainab, the fact that people, some people, and who may in fact be a minority have issues with Dr. Grace Mugabe does not mean it is a crime to support her. No one can sustain that view. It is only the people who decide who will lead them through an election. You do not prevent an election through a military coup simply arguing that you do not like Grace Mugabe. It's unprofessional for an army to do that. The Zimbabwean army under Chiwenga has joined the ranks of uh, banana republics where military uh, individuals intervene because they don't like this individual, they like that individual. Oh. They've reduced our country into a country of good guys versus bad guys. Have you spoken? Yeah, to uh, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, you, she, she, she was... Grace Mugabe was not only the first lady, she was also the secretary, secretary for Women's Affairs in the ruling party. And that position, Zenab, is a very serious position. And as a leader, a top leader in the party, she was entitled, one, to discharge a program, and two, express her views about who should occupy whatever well, office. She you, was entitled to have that. You spoken, and, and have you spoken so, to her? Have you spoken to her? She's not been seen since the removal of her husband from power. Have you spoken to her, or for that matter, Robert Mugabe? No, I haven't, uh, because of the circumstances that have arisen. I look forward to doing so, especially to speaking to President Mugabe. President Mugabe uh, Zenab is uh, Zimbabwe's Castro. But unfortunately, Zimbabwe is not Cuba, and Zimbabweans are not Cubans because our politics have been influenced by our neo-colonial relationship with the white settler uh, economy and, 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 and with Britain. Okay. You said you're proud of having served under Robert Mugabe. You've talked about his legacy. His legacy, for example, is that three quarters of Zimbabwe's population live on less than five, to five and a half dollars a day. A quarter of Zimbabwe's children under the age of five, 27% of them experience stunted growth. The the Trades Union Congress in Zimbabwe says that there's 90% unemployment. I could go on and on. You are higher education minister. The, the, the fees for a term at a university in Zimbabwe is a thousand US dollars a term. So it's become really something that only the privileged few can uh, enjoy. I mean, that's just an example of the legacy that you talk about. No, you no that is not the legacy. That's what you are calling the legacy. You are identifying certain challenges that the Republic of Zimbabwe has, <laughs> and you say that this is the legacy. No, that is a very strange definition of legacy. We accept, as we did even as we were in government, that there were challenges uh, facing the country. We know what the reasons for some of those policy challenges are. But unfortunately, the president put faith in the people who have now turned against him and who used his assignment of responsibility to in fact plot his downfall. But you were part mm -hmm. of a government, yes. as I said, yes. which um, this current government says now that you were part of the systemic corruption. We've heard press reports of your lavish home in Harare. My home 
is uh, very modest to home in the neighborhood. There's nothing extraordinary about it's it. It's described as I lavish. I built that house when I was not in government. <laughs> I worked very hard in order to get that uh, house built. I am very proud. You people can create as many stories as they want, but the truth of the matter is you will not find a single case oh. where I took a cent to build anything for myself or my family. Are you talking to an intermediary about your own future and whether you can make some no, kind of deal of immunity future. from prosecution? You cannot <laughs> discuss those issues with an illegal regime. And, in, and an illegal regime is one that comes into power against the constitution in violation of the constitution. That regime may be in effective control of the territory, but it is an illegal regime. It is an illegitimate regime. They came so, in saying they wanted to have elections within six months. We know that when Mnangagwa and Chiwenga went to, to uh, Morgan Swangirai's house, and Morgan Swangirai, the, uh, the opposition leader in Zimbabwe, yeah. they pretended that they were uh, concerned about his health and so, so forth. But we know they wanted to, to negotiate with him to postpone elections for at least right, let's three talk years. about you. What they will you do? They are afraid of elections. What, they don't want to have what, free and fair elections. What will let you alone do? Incredible elections. What will you do? Sorry? do you, what will you do? Do you want immunity from pro prosecution? Do you want to go back to Zimbabwe? We would. Every Zimbabwean who cares about the country would like to see a return to constitutionalism. That is the fundamental. We must have the rule of law. The army deployed itself in Zimbabwe when the constitution says only the president can deploy it. Now, when you have people who have deployed themselves, taken over all the institutions of the state and government, you don't discuss immunity with them. But they if you were no to be offered basis. it, would you go back? If you were to be offered it, would you when go back? When the devil offers you immunity, you would be a fool to enter into what is called a Faustian bargain. So what Any will you do? Will Where will you live? I mean, there have been press reports that you asked the Kenyan authorities for asylum and that this was refused. Um, wh where will you uh, go? No, is that but the these are false reports. These are false. You know, there have been uh, all sorts of reports fishing for my whereabouts. I want to tell you, uh, uh, Zenab, what you know. You can't have people become stateless just because some individuals have grabbed power in their home country. That's not international law. We do not live in the jungle anymore. So these questions will resolve themselves in the fullness of time. So how is Jonathan Moyo going to live? Be forever a fugitive on the run? Where, where are you going to you live? Where will you be a fugitive. I want, I, I want to remind you, when I left Zimbabwe, there was no warrant of arrest against me. I did not run away from any warrant of arrest. I ran away, if you want to use those terms, from a death warrant, an unlawful attack on my house by military people. There is no one anywhere in the world who will simply sit there and say, come and attack me, come and kill me. You do not uh, uh, implement justice by sending armed soldiers to attack a civilian uh, uh, residence. So I'm not bothered about that question because uh, at some point, the rule of law and constitutionalism will speak. Zimbabweans are already demanding. They want to know what happened to President Mugabe. He was humiliated by the very same people who were saying they want to restore his legacy, who were claiming to be targeting others around him, when in fact yeah. they were targeting Mugabe. Do you and think they we'll targeted him in again? a very humiliating and totally what? unacceptable way. Zimbabweans there... <laughs> Forget about me. Do you think you'll ever see the your country, country are again, asking then? fundamental questions about what happened, why it happened, and they want to see restoration of the rule of law, constitutionalism in Zimbabwe, and they will get it. Jonathan Moyo, thank you very much indeed for coming on Hard Talk.